Well, welcome to our church at home experience. Come on. I'm Xavier, and I am the Central Youth Director and also the Assistant Location Leader here at our Port Richmond location. And our mission here at the Block Church is to see our city revived one block at a time. And the way we do that is by starting locations and serving in our communities. And we recognize right now that we're in uncertain times, which is why we find great comfort in being in the presence of the Lord. So here in a moment, we're going to enter into worship, and we invite you, wherever you are, whoever you are, to join us to call on the name of the Lord. And after worship, we're going to receive a specific word from our lead pastor as to how to respond in the time of the world right now and in our nation. And I invite you right now, if comfortable, lift a hand, join us in worship, sing with us, shout with us as we invite God into our space. So Father, right now, we invite you in our lives, in our homes, in our minds. We surrender. We give it to you. Speak to us and bring us your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to see you dancing. I want to see you celebrating. Come on. See you. I was buried beneath my shame. Everybody rock like this. Everybody rock like this. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my till I met you. I was breathing for not a lie.
to remind me of your love. Come on, church, sing it out. Cause you Consistent. 
up, guys? My name is Derek, and I'm the Center City Location Pastor, and I hope you have been enjoying service so far. If you have, feel free to like, share on your social media. Maybe you have not yet connected with our church, or you have some questions, or you want to be a part of our church, or what's happening here at the Block Church. Feel free to shoot us an email at info at theblockchurch.org. We would love to stay connected with you, especially during this time. And so here's how we want you to do that. We want you to follow us on social media. There are going to be so many updates or things and content that we're going to be uh, displaying on our social media. And we want you to be the first to know when things are happening. You can also download our app. We'll be sending out push notifications as to what's happening, what are we doing, how can you be praying, how can we best serve you. So you want to make sure you have that app so that we can stay connected with you and you can stay in the know about what's happening here at the Block Church. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. This time we might not be able to physically uh, meet as a church, but we're still going to be meeting as the church like we're doing right here, right now. And so you want to be connected to our YouTube channel where we're going to be pushing out content to make sure the word of God is still going forth. We're still meeting as a community here at the Block Church. And we're going to prepare to give I want you to know, as it's already been stating, stated, we don't know how long this is going to last. But one thing I know is that we are going to do everything possible to make sure that we are resourcing you, that we are serving our city. We're looking into everything possible. We might not be physically meeting, but the work of God still continues. And our mission is our mission, regardless of where we are, where we're meeting, we're going to revive our city. And so there might be chaos or uncertainty in the world, but God's kingdom is eternal and it's consistent and it's lasting. So if no better time to invest, the time to invest is now because his kingdom lasts forever. And we trust the kingdom of heaven to help us navigate the kingdoms of earth. So as you give, we're going to be able to resource the city. We're going to be able to resource you and to serve our city. We want to be some of the first responders to what's happening here in our city and what's happening in the world. And so continue to be faithful and consistent in your giving during this time. And watch how God blows our mind with what he's going to do with what we've invested into his kingdom. There's several ways that you can give. You can text the block to 77977. You can give on our app or on our website. We're going to hear from our lead pastor in just a few, but would you bow your heads and pray with me? God, we're so grateful that your kingdom is eternal. It will last forever. And so we are so confident that we can invest in your kingdom, knowing that even in times of uncertainty, that you will be faithful to us. And so we still trust you with everything that we have, with our time, with our resources, with our talent. We trust you with it all, knowing that you will be faithful even until the very end. We give it all to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to give you the la latest, latest. Masson, latest update on the novel coronavirus spreading in the U.S. Hit Washington State reporting they have the test kits, but doctors... 34 states plus New York City and D.C. reported more than 500 cases. Now, many are wondering when life on these islands will be normal again. Other big attractions to close, Disneyland and Universal the Studios. The, the number of affected states, cases and deaths will continue to rise. Everyone, my name is Lauren, and alongside my husband, we are the lead pastors of the Block Church. Our president has claimed this day, March 15th, a national day of prayer. And we're going to participate in that today, and we're going to pray for people who've been affected by this virus. We're going to pray for the health and protection of those of us who don't have this virus, and we're going to claim that we will not receive this virus. And I'm going to pray today for the people who are making decisions that affect a lot of people in our nation. And so would you extend your hand, lift up your hands as we receive this prayer. Jesus, we're grateful today 
for the people who are not experiencing this virus. I pray protection in Jesus' name that we would not be people that would receive this virus. God, grateful are we that we are healthy and whole, that your blood has covered us. God, we pray for the people who are experiencing health issues during this time. Would you minister to them? Would you cover them? God, I pray that our church, that the church would be a hope in the middle of chaos. I pray for the people who are making decisions on behalf of our cities, on behalf of our churches, on behalf of our nation. God, give us wisdom. Would we be spirit-led people making decisions that's coming directly from you? I pray for wisdom and anointing and covering in Jesus' name that would we lead people well. And God, I pray for the local church that we would be intentional about our words, how we speak, how we love, how we care, how we act. Would we be a beacon of hope in the middle of chaos? Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're leading us and you're directing our path. You've been in every single detail, and you are still on the throne. So we're grateful for every hard thing that you allow us to walk through and lead people through. Jesus, we give you our church. We give you our people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lauren. And uh, again, so glad that you're joining us wherever you are. I want to take a moment right now. And I want to welcome those of you uh, who are a part of our church uh, from Port Richmond and from the Northeast and uh, from Center City and, and from Passchion. But, but ultimately, everyone, maybe you're not a part of our church, we just want to give a great big welcome. Welcome again to the Block Church. Come on, let's give everybody a hand. And again, as my wife said, my name is Joey and have the privilege of being the lead pastor here. And we're thrilled about what this next season of ministry looks like and can become. And I understand and I know uh, that there is a lot of fear and a lot of stress and panic and, and unknowns about what we're facing right now, but I just want to encourage you. I want to prophesy over you right now that our best days are ahead of us. I'm telling you the best days for the church are ahead. Of God is getting ready to do something so supernatural. I feel it in my bones. I'm thrilled about this next season. And, and, and while we're not gathering corporately, I promise you we are still going to be ministering to you faithfully. We are considering every possibility to meet needs. We are considering every possibility to continue to minister, to provide content. Rest assured, your church is here for you. And just because we're not gathering together does not mean that we aren't still the church. The church was never a building. The church has always been a peoplehood. It's always been a people. And that's what we're about. That's what we're going to do. So call your people. Love your people. Let's reach this city and revive it. Come on. You know, I, um, I can't remember ever, I mean, I don't know if any of us can remember a time quite like this where there has seemed to be so much panic over toilet paper. I mean, if, if you don't have toilet paper at this point, you're going to have to use leaves. That's what I'm... Uh, but uh, I, I just, yeah, the, it just feels crazy. And I certainly don't want to downplay what's going on. Um, but it does make me think about, uh, I think the only other time in my life where uh, I felt some of this craziness was when I was in 10th grade, uh, September 11th, 2001. And some of you watching right now, I mean, I, I'm not naive to think that you may not have even been alive then, or it's not even a memory, it's something you read about. But a very real moment for me, September 11th. In fact, a pivotal moment for me in my personal life, in my journey with God. It was earlier that summer that I had an encounter with God so significant. I went on a missions trip to Denmark and then I went to a youth camp and I, I, I mean, I experienced really, I think, God and the Holy Spirit for the first time in my life. And that fall, I came in fired up. 
Now, I, I may have shared this story before, but I just think pertinent. I remember September 11th. Significantly, I was on the varsity football team. I was a sophomore, um, but we had a, a football class, third period. Our school had an, an actual class for the varsity football team. Amen. Okay. And, uh, and we would sit in there and do nothing. And, uh, <laughs> but I remember walking into class, that third period class, and uh, it was almost immediately the lights all went off. The whole electricity of the place went off. And the principal came over the intercom and he said, uh, we are in a code yellow, which means nobody moves, stay where you are. And what we, we had pulled up, all the, I mean, all the electricity, we, we had pulled up a radio, and the president of the United States was actually in Florida that day. That's where I was going to high school. And so our school, we thought that maybe we were under attack. Uh, what we found out later that day was uh, that a, a, a company that was across the street hit a power line and made everything go out. So we were actually not in danger, but we all thought we were. But it was in that moment, we were sitting there, and I was in football class with a bunch of seniors. Remember, I was a sophomore, but I had a new experience with God. And I remember how afraid and frustrated and stressed out some of these juniors and seniors were. I mean, I heard things like, we're going to have to go to war. We're going to have to quit school. We're getting drafted. I mean, just all the panic, right, in a moment. And I was sitting there in the dark, and I invited all of these individuals who are older than me, bigger than me, stronger than me. And I said, let's pray. And I just started to gather these guys and pray over them. Every single class I went to throughout the rest of the day, by the way, this was a public school, I started leading my class in prayer. I mean, I was fired up. It was a day later where I then took all of my football team to church, watched many of them walk to an altar and give their life to Christ. I remember the newspaper writing stories about what was happening on our football team. In fact, I have a friend to this day who we've stayed connected from that moment. I say all that to say this. I know there's a lot of panic and grief and worry and ah, what is happening. But whenever there's something going on, whenever there's panic, whenever there's fear, there's also opportunity. In fact, I'd submit to you today that whatever is happening right now, it's more spiritual than you think. It's way more spiritual than you think. And I think we're facing another moment in history, and we can't waste it. We can't waste it. People are hurting. They're afraid. They're stressed. They're sick. They're grieving. I think we're in a divine disruption. And that's what I want to title my sermon in this moment, that this is a divine disruption. I submit that to you. I prophesy that to you now that we are in the middle of a divine disruption. A disruption is often disguised as God's invitation to something supernatural. That's what a disruption is. It is disguised. It's God saying, okay, I'm disrupting the order of things, and I want to do something unique and special. Now, I want to be clear about something. Uh, did God cause this? I know some people are thinking that. I, I wouldn't necessarily put this virus on God more so, I'd probably put it on the fact that we live in a fallen state and sin is the virus that produces more viruses. But God always uses and always redeems situation. And I think we're in the middle of the story that's still being told. And I know that 2020 has been the ultimate trigger for some people. I mean, every day, something new. The Australian wildfires. Right? You think about the tensions between Iran, the U.S., the plane going down. Uh, you think about um, Kobe Bryant. I mean, that was a trigger moment. I mean, I could go down the list of all the different things, the Tennessee tornadoes. And of course, we're in the middle of this coronavirus stuff. And I just think about this is a disruption. We're in the middle of a disruption. And then also, as a church, you may not be a part of our church, but as a church, we declared 2020 the year of health. And isn't it ironic, don't you think? Sorry, 90s joke. I'm getting old, guys. 
Isn't it ironic that we declare this the year of health, yet our health is under attack? Is it possible that God's trying to say something to us? I mean, we heard from God prophetically. This is the year of health. God was saying, get ready, get your bodies ready, get your mind ready. Our health is under attack, but God's disrupting something. And if you think about disruption and what that means, what that looks like, there's a difference between interruption and disruption. Interruption is to stop the continuous progress of an activity. NBA, interrupted. Right? NCAA, interrupted. Sports, interrupted. All these different things. But a disruption is different. And I'd submit to you that we're not in an interruption. We are in a disruption. A disruption means to prevent something from continuing in a normal way or in the way it was going. It's a change in order. It's a change in order. I don't think we're in an interruption. I think we're in a disruption that's causing you to pull back, to think about your health, to change your order, to change your way. There is some cleaning and some cleansing taking place right now as we speak. Are you paying attention to what the Holy Spirit is trying to do in you in this moment right now? There's a change of order at hand. A a divine disruption, possibly. And I'd say to you that disruptions from God can actually be a good thing for your soul. Some of us are getting some rest right now. Some of us are getting a pause right now. Some of us aren't going to work right now, even though we're working from home. Some of us, as church leaders, we're like, "Uh, what do we do? Maybe God wants to change the order of some things. Maybe how we did church needs to change. Maybe how we did life needs to change. Maybe how we raise our kids and what we watch and what we do and how we consume media. Maybe the order of it needs to change a little bit. And I want to go to a scripture, and I'm going to read a lot of verses, but you'll see why later. But Solomon, the son of David, the guy who asked for wisdom, he feels it's his responsibility to build the Lord a temple. And so... Before they build the temple, they make a declaration that they're going to build the temple. I I love Bible times, man. Everything was a party. Everything was a celebration. Everything was fanfare. Everything was pomp and circumstance. Everything was a feast. Come on, somebody. And and so they make the declaration in 1 Kings 5 that they're going to build the house. And then here's what happened. All the people of Israel assembled to King Solomon at the festival in the month of Ethanim which was the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the priest carried the ark where the presence of God lived. Thankful that now the presence of God lives within me and around me. So they brought up the ark of the Lord, the tent of meeting, and all the holy vessels that were in the tent. The priest and the Levites brought them up. So essentially the tent of meeting was actually what their temple was. It was mobile church. Come on, somebody. Okay. Uh, King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who had assembled before him were with him before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they could not be counted or numbered. This was their way of giving. This was their way of generosity. Then the priest brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim, the angels. I think it's interesting for you to note and understand, please hear this, is the radical generosity produced, the sacrificial generosity is what produced the the magnitude of God's presence. Pay attention to that, especially in a season like this where you want to hold tightly God's saying, release. For the cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the ark so that the cherubim made a covering above the ark and its poles. Man, this was a sight. The poles were so long that the ends of the poles were seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen from the outside. They are there to this day. There was nothing in the ark except the two tablets of stone that Moses had placed there at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites when they came out of the land of Egypt. And when the priests came out of the holy place, pay attention, A cloud filled the house of the Lord so the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. I got goosebumps. This is fanfare. Think about what's happening. Pay attention. Okay. 
Everyone has gathered. There's tons of people. There's tons of food. There's sacrifices. There's giving. There's worship. There's excitement. We are going to build the temple of the Lord. We are going to carry on the legacy. We're going to move from mobile to an actual facility. Like, man, this is exciting. We're going all in. We're going we're gonna to give. We're going to sow. We're going to do what we're supposed to do. The presence of God, it's fanfare. And the presence of the Lord was so heavy that he disrupted what was supposed to happen because the ministers were to come out and then carry on the worship, carry on the services, carry on what was supposed to happen, the norm, the order of the way it was supposed to happen. But God wanted to disrupt the order of what was taking place. And so the ministers were so overwhelmed by the presence of God, they could not even stand any longer. To be honest with you, I'm ready for a new order where God changes our order of service a little bit. I'm ready for a new order where the same old stuff isn't acceptable anymore. That when we walk into worship, when we all come back together, oh, the glory of the Lord would fill the temple and we would not even be able to move because of the presence of God. So thick, so tangible, so real. God disrupted the order because he wanted to do something new. Don't build me this house. Don't do what you always did with what you feel called to do now, which is new. We can't do the same things the old way and then expect to walk into a new season and experience a new presence, a new anointing, a new favor. Now is the time to pre prepare for the new. In the disruption, now is the time to prepare for what God wants to do when all of this is over. See, disruptions change plans, but when God's involved, His purpose sets course. All we have to do is seek His will in the wild. Are you seeking His will right now in this disruption? Think about how God works. Abraham and Sarah. Excuse me, Abraham. Before Abraham became Abraham, the father Abraham, who had many sons, and many sons have father Abraham, and I'm one of them, and so are you, so let's just praise the Lord. That's a kid's church joke, by the way. Right before that, God says, sell everything, move. I want to disrupt your life. Pack up. When God told Abraham and Sarah they'd be parents at 100 years of age, that was another disruption. Imagine that. Come on, if you've had four or five kids and then a number six is on the way, that'd be a disruption. Or maybe you never had kids, and all of a sudden, and you're 100. Disruption. When God spoke to Moses out of a burning bush and told Moses to leave his simple life to go and defy an Egyptian pharaoh, that's a disruption. When Jonah went one way and God sent a fish to swallow him, that's a disruption. When God spoke through the prophets and apostles, filling them with power, and the Jewish kings... And the Jewish leaders responded by throwing them in prison. That is a disruption. God said, go do this. And then the outcome wasn't exactly what they thought it would be. Disruption. When God appeared on earth incarnate as Jesus, and Jesus disrupted every religious setup, that is a big disruption. And when on Pentecost and God's Spirit came down and the Holy Spirit came and filled them with tongues of fire on their head, it disrupted the order of the future of the universe. When Paul was in prison and shipwrecked, a disruption. And when Jesus returns for his church, it will be the ultimate disruption. Disruptions are not all bad things, but they are uncomfortable in nature. And divine disruptions will often take us out of our comfort zone to position us for the miraculous. Man, I just feel so fired up for this disruption right now. Wherever you are, whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, I'm telling you, there's something better on the other side of this. You might be sick in bed. You might have a virus. I don't know what's going on. You must declare faith in Jesus' name that this disruption could be producing something good and gold. Do not waste this moment. Church, church of Jesus Christ, we cannot waste this moment. We are disrupted, and it's divine. What are we going to do about it? And in 2 Chronicles 7, when Solomon finished praying, now they're about to actually complete the temple. Fire flashed down from heaven and burned up the offerings. Again, another sacrificial gift and sacrifice. And the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple. The priests 
could not enter the temple of the Lord because the glorious presence of the Lord filled it. Another disruption. When all the people of Israel saw the fire coming down and the glorious presence of the Lord filling the temple, they fell face down and worshiped and praised the Lord saying, he is good, his faithful love endures forever. I think that's a good posture in this season. Then one night, the Lord appeared to Solomon and said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this temple as the place for making sacrifices. Lord, choose us, choose our church, choose our mission, choose Philadelphia. Then God says this, this is where it gets tricky and this is where your faith has to act and your maturity has to act. But God says, at times I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls or command grasshoppers to devour your crops or send plagues among you. Excuse me? Maybe let's skip that. Hey, what about your presence, God? Is it possible that God allows or utilizes certain things to grow us deeper, to disrupt us and to disrupt our order. And then God says this. He says, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. Listen to me. I believe restoration is on the way. But understand something about this passage and the context of it. God was speaking to Israel in reference to the temple and their wicked ways. And a lot of Christians, particularly in the U.S., believe that if we all get on the same page and we pray, God will heal our land. And I don't know necessarily if that's what's happening because God's speaking to the Israelites. He's speaking to the Israel people. But stay with me. Understand something. We need a, na a national repentance. You understand, we need a national revival. The church not only has to get on the same page. The church not only has to repent. The church not only has to call on God and weep and be unified and stop competing. The church has to not only surrender and confess and submit their sin, but we have to so do it in such a way where the power of God fills our temples with glory, where we are so influential, where in a moment like this where people are seeking hope, we are the hope, where we provide and bring forth a national revival a national time of repentance where sinners and saints alike fall on their face and call in the name of the Lord that's when we see the land healed but it's if you call yourself a Christian it starts with us in a divine disruption so I'm declaring and I'm believing that if we call in the name of the Lord, yes, and get unified, remember when we lift up the name of Jesus, he will draw all men to him. We still got to reach people in this season. I don't care if we're not meeting corporately. We still got to reach people in this season. Revival depends on it. See, when there are crazy things happening around us, God is attempting to do something in us so he can do something through us. Are you disrupted yet? Are you bothered yet? Are you uncomfortable yet? We are under a divine disruption. What do we do when we're disrupted? As I close, I want to give you three very quick things. What do we do when we are disrupted? Here's number one. We've got to stop complaining. Stop complaining. Some of you got two weeks off from school. I saw 3,000 Facebook posts of all the parents who are mad that now they have their children at home. And I get it, and I get that it's an inconvenience, but when they're 18, 19, and 20, you're going to wish that they had those two weeks at home. Make it count. And furthermore, to be honest with you, and I'm the king complainer, chief of all sinners in this category, I mean, a couple weeks ago, I'm mad at our nine o'clock services and, you know, four and a half people there, and I'm going, the other day I'm going, man, you just don't know what you have until it's gone. What I'd give for an empty nine o'clock, come on, somebody. Stop complaining. The psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be 
in my mouth. I, I can't complain and praise at the same time. I, I, and God help me. And in this season, we've got to stop complaining. If we are complaining during this season, we are out of order. We're missing the divine disruption. Do not curse the blessing of God that is this moment in time. Stop complaining. Stop complaining of the inconveniences and look around and see them as blessings in disguise, opportunities. God disrupted us for a purpose. And here's number two. What do we do when we're disrupted? We've got to start confessing. I cannot stress to you enough how important it is to not give in to fear in this season. It's never as good as somebody tells you and it's never as bad as somebody tells you. Okay, do not let the media and the news drive you into acting out of fear or without proven facts. I know it's a tough world we live in. I know it's challenging to know what to believe. You got to lean into the Holy Spirit. You have a compass inside of you. You have a detector of truth inside of you. Lean into the Holy Spirit. Start confessing. Well, what, is, what does that mean? Well, let me also say this as I describe that. Don't ignore the virus or the dangers with extreme faith statements that make the church look cultish, cultish and stupid and ignorant. So like, don't say God is going to kill all the bad people and start blaming other people for the virus. Okay? Like that would be stupid. Uh, that would be unfair. And it would give the church of Jesus a bad name. We need to just start focusing on the truth of what we know. And if we cannot decipher what the truth is in our world, then we've got to go to, what the, to the Word, and we've got to decipher and declare what that truth is, which we know is timeless. We know that we have, and we know the way, the truth, and the life. The truth is this, that God is for us. The truth is this, that the best is ahead. The truth is that this too shall pass. The truth is that I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. The truth is Jesus is still the great physician. The truth truth is I've not been given a spirit of fear. I have a sound mind. I'm a son and daughter of God. Bodies are still being raised. Eyes are still being opened. God still works things together for my good. That's the truth. And if we can't figure out what is, we got to focus on what we know. Start confessing the truth over your babies, over your house, over your friends, over this church. And finally, I want to encourage you as we confess, we should use this time to commune and repent. Repent for our world, repent for our nation, repent for our city, our community. The fact is, is all of us have been affected with the same virus of sin, rebellion, selfishness, and pride. And spiritually, we need our soul cleansed. And you know, the only way to stop this virus is to clean everything. The only way to stop the virus of sin is to clean everything. It's time to cleanse ourselves. God, clean me. Create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Clean me, God. Disrupt me. And finally, number three, we got to stay confident. Confident in this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord. Confident. I hope you've stayed with us during this whole time. I want to read one more scripture and then we'll close. But it's out of Romans and Paul writes, Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. Come on, take heart in that. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse, but with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. For we know that all creation has been groaning in the spirit pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory, for we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies he has promised us. We were given this hope when we were saved if we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. What I'm saying is stay confident in this. It's ours. If you're sick today, be confident in this. Whether this life or next, we have a hope that cannot be stolen or taken. 
But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and at the end, confidently. Confidently. All right, I'm all done. But just think about this with me for a moment. The coronavirus, in a sense, is a respiratory attack. And it's why most, most deaths are happening to people with chronic illness, asthma, and the elderly. Trouble breathing is a major sign of the virus. It's disruptive to your breathing. But I want to remind you of something, wherever you are, that in Genesis, the Bible says that God breathed life into our nostrils. I want to remind you in Job that the Bible says that the breath of the Almighty gives me life. I want to remind you that Job also says, for as long as life is in me, the breath of God is in my nostrils. Psalm says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Ezekiel says to prophesy to the breath and breath on the slain come to life. And John, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And with his last breath, Jesus said, forgive them. They don't know what they do. And today you will be with me in paradise. What I'm saying is the breath of God is on you. And I prophesy right now to every breath in your body, to yours and to your children, to those without breath today, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Let his praise continually be in my mouth and on my lips. The best days are ahead. Fear not. God is with us. And even in the hospital room, God is with us. He's the great physician. And right now, with every head bowed, every, every eye closed, you might be listening to this or watching this, and you are far from God. There's sin in your life. You're hopeless. You're freaking out about what's happening in our world today. You're freaking out. There is but one hope, and there is but one name that saves, and it's the name of Jesus. So if you are far from God, maybe at one point you, you knew God, you had a relationship with him, but you don't anymore, or you've never been in relationship with Jesus, today's the day, now's the time, this divine disruption is your moment. And I want to say a prayer, and I want to pray for you. And these guys are going to repeat after me, and I want to encourage you if you're sensing this, you need God. Repeat this after me. Come on, let's pray together. Jesus, thank you for coming. Thank you for dying. And thank you for forgiving my sin. I need you today. I believe in you today. Raise me to life like you were raised from the dead. Be my leader. Be my Lord. My life is yours. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, it's the best decision you could ever make, and we're with you. Let us know where we're at. Before we go, can we just make this declaration of victory? over our life, for our nation, for our city. Just right where you're at. Come by your head, bow your heads. Pull out your hands. Through everything I know that you are Lord. Oh, by your voice delivered from the storm. I'm resting in your goodness, I secure. You control the waves beyond the shore. Oh, victory is yours. Come on, let's declare that right now. Victory is yours. Yes, it is. Oh, it is that victory is yours. I know, I know that victory is yours. Oh, 
God, we love you and we trust you now. Victory is yours. It's ours. And we receive this divine disruption. Your will, your way on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give God a praise. God bless you. Stay tuned and we will see you very soon. Thank you so much for joining us today for our special online experience, Church at Home. Wasn't Pastor Joey's message on divine disruption exactly what we needed during this time? We're an online community right now. And just because we can't meet physically doesn't mean that we can't care for you faithfully. So remember, follow us on social media. That is where we're going to push out special content for you to stay connected to the Block Church and how we get to serve each other. Also, download our app. That is where we're gonna send out special push notifications to keep you in the know on what's happening in and through our church and our city. Don't forget, right now, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get special notifications about when we upload new content for you to watch. And also, if you're new or interested in The Block Church, send us an email at info at theblockchurch.org. Due to the recent developments in our nation and in our city, we have adjusted our fasting schedule. This week, we are going to be giving up one meal a day. And during that time that you would normally eat that meal, we are asking that you would spend special time in prayer for our city and for our nation. And finally, if you haven't had the chance to give yet, all of your giving options are on the screen below. God bless you as you give.